If there is any weapon that could be considered the most iconic within the Monster Hunter series, I'd have to say it was probably the Greatsword. Having existed since the very first iteration of the series, the weapon has managed to continually evolve and progress in design to what we can now see in Monster Hunter Rise. Today, we're going to take a look at the start of the Greatsword, and thanks to that, revisiting the start of Monster Hunter as a whole. We'll go through each generation of the series and look at the changes and design decisions made each time. I think you'll be surprised at how drastically the weapon evolved over the course of almost 20 years. Like I mentioned in the previous videos, I take a look at the comments and see what you guys want me to cover next. I've been seeing a lot of requests for the older generation weapons, as well as many of the newer gen weapons like Charge Blade and switch axe. Don't worry, your weapon will be covered eventually, so be sure to subscribe so you can catch the video once it's released. In the meantime, I'm Super Rad, and this is the history of the Greatsword. Monster Hunter on the PS2 would introduce players to the Greatsword, a towering beast of a weapon that packed quite the punch but really showed off the contrast between Monster Hunter and other action games of its time. A slow, methodical weapon that packed incredibly high damage, helping reward the player for utilizing a safe and methodical playstyle. The main aspects of the weapon include its large, sweeping attacks either vertically or horizontally, and its ability to block. It's an incredibly slow weapon, but when planned appropriately, can unleash a large amount of damage through timed hits and even an infinite. For example, pressing left on the right analog stick will perform a horizontal slash, which can then be followed up with right on the analog stick to perform an upswing, or up on the analog stick to perform a vertical slash. These attacks can all be chained together, but the hunter can't use the same attack twice in a row. The downside to the infinite is how slow it is, meaning hunters are more likely to roll and cancel out of their combos to evade being attacked rather than persistently applying damage. Upswing is also particularly annoying in this gen as it can send any fellow hunter near you flying. This would actually be something that continues on in later generations. The main greatsword attacks can be mixed and matched for a variety of combos that fit various situations, giving the weapon a larger amount of depth than you may expect. The block mechanic isn't unique to the Greatsword, but can be utilized to dodge multitudes of attacks without having to reposition or sheathe a hunter's weapon. It consumes stamina and sharpness, which is dependent on the strength of the attack the sword is blocking, but can even block special attacks like the Gypsaros Flash or Stop Bull Fangos that are charging at you endlessly until the remainder of your sanity has been depleted. While the weapon is a true powerhouse, it actually pales in overall DPS in comparison to something like the Lance, which is one of the weapons that dominated that generation. Additionally, if you remember from my longsword video, the weapon sported many models that, while looking like longswords, functioned like greatswords. Some of these models would later be reworked into the longsword class in the next generation. The weapon also has generally lower sharpness in comparison to other weapon types regardless of what tree you decide to forge or upgrade through. A couple final nuances of the weapon include how damage is calculated and a small kick attack. The key area of the weapon that provides the most damage is the center of the blade, with the base and the tip lessening the amount of damage significantly, meaning hunters had to be very aware of their positioning when attacking any monster. The kick attack could be done with the weapon sheath, but was effectively useless at this point in the series. However, it would gain slightly more utility in the third generation. Now you may be asking me at this point, um, Daddy Super Rad, why aren't you talking about the charge mechanic? You know, the most iconic aspect of the weapon that defines it throughout each generation. Well, believe it or not, random viewer that I just made up, but the charge mechanic didn't actually exist in the first generation and wouldn't exist until Monster Hunter Dose in Generation 2. So what are the biggest changes in Generation 2? Well, the only truly major change would be the charge mechanic, which takes a deceptively simple looking weapon like the Greatsword and applies even more depth and versatility to its moveset. The charge mechanic is directly attached to the vertical swing attack, which now comes in four attack states. Starting with uncharged, this attack has the fastest buildup, but lowest damage or motion value. Then there's charge level 1, which requires you to hold the weapon in position for one tier of charge. 
Hunters would see their character begin to glow slightly and could release the attack button in order to launch their weapon attack with a slightly higher motion value. Charge levels 2 and 3 would require the hunter to stay in position for longer and their character would begin to glow brighter through each tier, with each providing higher motion values overall. If the hunter holds the charge all the way to level 3, it releases automatically. This mechanic helped build on the original concept of the greatsword. If you thought it promoted slow and methodical play before, and really made you commit to each attack, that was even more the case now. Having to stand in place for so long to get the most out of your weapon really puts the pressure on the hunter to make sure that they aren't simply opening themselves up to get bullfangoed. Many monsters would have plenty of openings in which a level 3 charge was possible, but it required a large amount of of knowledge on the hunter's end to perform successfully. The weapon attacks were switched to buttons instead of the right analog stick in this generation. Now vertical slash was mapped to triangle, horizontal to circle, and upswing to triangle and circle together. Additionally, mechanics like blocking or charge attack could be performed out of weapon sheath. One of the most effective aspects, the bread and butter if you will, is utilizing draw attacks. The high motion value of draw attacks with the greatsword makes it perfect for utilizing hit and run tactics, where hunters would run in for a draw attack, evade away, sheath, than repeat. This is especially useful when armor skills buffing these types of attacks are applied. Monster Hunter's third generation introduced a new move that could be comboed out of the underutilized kick animation from previous generations. Now hunters could slap monsters with their sword for a slight amount of impact damage. A new form of the charge slash called the strong charge could even be comboed further out of the sword slap by pressing a direction in the triangle button at the same time. While this charged attack is slightly more powerful than the traditional charge attack, it can't be comboed out of, lowering its versatility. A major change made to the charge mechanic was how the level 3 charge was activated. While the hunter could still hold the charge until it released on its own, this would only produce the motion value of a level 2 charge. To get the proper level 3 charge to activate, the player would have to release their attack slightly after the glow from their level 2 charge began to disappear or lessen invisibility. The hunter would know they were successful as the level 3 charge has a more prominent energy burst around the hunter in comparison to an overcharge. This requirement of timing your level 3 release also applied to a strong charge at this time, but overcharging the strong charge would be removed altogether in Portable 3rd onward. Other than that, Greatsword wouldn't see many major changes in this generation, and would stay relatively similar to its Gen 2 counterpart until moving on to Monster Hunter 4 and Cross in Generation 4. Monster Hunter 4's main new addition next to aerial moves is the strong side slash attack. After performing a strong charge, the player can press X to perform the strong side slash finisher, functioning as a powerful horizontal slash. The attack damage is dependent on the level of the strong charge, so it'll be more powerful during charge level 3. Due to its especially high damage, the attack comes with the major downside of not being able to cancel out of the attack by evading, and the ending animation is fairly long. So so hunters would want to make sure that they have a fairly long opening to use the ability. Moves like the horizontal slash now allowed for more evasive options starting in this generation. Players also gain the ability to enter the strong charge stance through multiple means. Hunters can perform a side slap out of an evade, allowing them to quickly enter into a strong charge without having to perform the initial charge attack. Alternatively, performing the horizontal slash with the A button followed by another A and a direction will also begin the strong charge, though no one really seems to use this since horizontal slash covers so much ground and trips easily. I thought that was a longsword thing. With aerial attacks, there's a small nuance attached to the aerial slam that the greatsword can perform, namely being able to perform a level 2 strong side slash by pressing X immediately after performing your jump attack. It's a great way to get in some extra damage after an aerial attack if the hunter doesn't manage to mount the monster. But remember, the animation is very long. Moving on to generations, something I noticed first was that small attacks seem to not knock me over while using my charge attacks, implying there's some form of super armor on the charge. But I'm not not sure if this was introduced specifically within this entry. As with all weapons, the Greatsword had access to multiple hunting styles, the most effective of which seemed to be Guild, Adept, and Valor, with Valor being incredibly powerful. However, I have also been informed that Striker was the second best style, so 
you know, take that as you will. The different styles would not only unlock new movement or attack options, but also limit which abilities could be used. For example, Striker style doesn't allow the hunter to strong charge. Valor style specifically opened up a few cool options for the weapon. Once in the Valor state, hunters have the ability to perform very efficient charge maneuvers. For example, the draw charge is much faster now thanks to a built-in focus ability that stacks with the focus armor skill. It can't be overcharged, and the hunter can perform a side slash out of it. However, unsheathed Valor level Level 3 charge slashes do not have built-in focus. Say that three times fast. The player can now launch themselves forward with the A button while charging this way, but the attack afterward would be slightly weaker in comparison to your typical idle charge. Greatsword specific arts were also introduced. Moves like Lion's Maw allowed the hunter to perform a powerful swinging attack before sheathing and powering up the next attack that they performed. Perfect for draw charging or planning for any big hit. Brimstone Slash is another example that performs an even more powerful charging attack that will automatically unlock leash if the hunter is interrupted, effectively making it a counter. Wait a second, they stole that from Longsword. The trend of these videos so far is that we usually see some singularly large changes throughout each generation, with World completely opening up the possibilities of each weapon. This is still the case with the Greatsword, which gained a large amount of functionality that we haven't seen prior. One minor but useful change is how you can slightly reposition the upper body of your hunter while charging, allowing you to see the slight angle for where the hit was going to finally land. Angling was introduced with the charge mechanic, but being able to properly see it beforehand was specific to Generation 5. No longer does pressing the circle simply perform a wide slash. Well, it does, but this move can be comboed consecutively. The user can press circle to perform the wide slash, and then circle again for a new move or mechanic known as a tackle. We'll get into tackle in a moment, but pressing the circle button one more time performs a jumping wide slash that can move the hunter forward for better repositioning. The tackle move is a new mechanic introduced in Generation 5 and allows the hunter to either combo into it or cancel into it depending on the situation. It effectively works like a super or hyper armored guard that moves the player forward slightly and prevents them from being flinched or knocked back. The downside of using a move like this is that the hunter will still take damage, although mitigated, but the upside is that it helps keep the aggression on the monster and lowers the overall amount of downtime in between attacking. When performing a charge attack, hunters can press circle while still holding triangle to perform the tackle. This will will not cancel the charge and will allow the hunter to continue where they left off. Tackle can also be activated through a guard or after an evade. So there's many options for how you plan on using it. Another nuance to the tackle is that the iframes differ depending on what charge level you cancel out of. By canceling out of a charge level 3 into a tackle, you'll gain a more effective animation. Additionally, the damage inflicted by the jumping wide slash seems to be determined based on the level of charge you cancel out of. This can even be weaved into a sword slap to continue into a strong charge combo. Another big change is having the ability to immediately shift into a strong charge from an overhead slash without requiring the sword slap. By performing an overhead slash, followed by any direction on the analog stick and triangle, hunters would automatically start the animation for a strong charge. In fact, players can actually immediately enter the strong charge through tackles as well, meaning many aspects of the weapon that were locked behind one or two combos now have a large amount of branches for accessing them. The strong side slash has been mapped to the circle button now rather than needing to press triangle again and other combo options out of the strong charge like upward slash or another sword slap get boosted when performed. However, those moves pale in comparison to the new true charge slash attack. By pressing a direction and triangle after a strong charge, the hunter can begin charging an even more powerful attack. When released, it actually comes out as two separate collisions, with the first being weaker and the next incredibly strong. Iceborne continues with the additions by adding more worth to making sure you get both hits in when doing the true charge slash. Specifically, if you land the first hit, the second cartwheel attack becomes powered up for extra damage. The second big addition is how the Greatsword can utilize its slinger combos. Like all weapons, the Greatsword can cancel part of its combos by performing a slinger burst. Doing so allows the hunter to immediately shift into the true charge slash right away, meaning it became incredibly easy to simply spam true charge slashes throughout the fight without needing to rely on a long-winded combo to do so. 
Finally, moving on to Rise, we can once again look at the demo to see what new abilities and changes have been bestowed on the iconic Monster Hunter weapon. A new aerial attack can be performed by hunters when they plunge down with their greatsword for a multi-hit attack that leads to mounting damage. This plunge can also be comboed into charge attacks, but the big change here is that these attacks will start in their second level of charge, making getting to level 3 much faster. Players can even plunge into the strong side slash from previous generations right away and then combo into a true charge slash, giving greatsword users a new way to quickly enter the stance considering they lost the ability to use the slinger from Iceborne. While the tackle mechanic remains relatively unchanged, the jumping wide slash now has a new mechanic. Rather than dealing more damage based on the charge level you cancel out of when performing the tackle, the jumping wide slash will instead gain multi-hit properties at charge level 3. Aside from the plunging mechanic and how jumping wide slash works, there aren't many new changes to the greatsword overall. If you've played World and Iceborne, you're probably going to feel right at home with this weapon. Where the other major changes lie are in the Silkbind attacks, and as I mentioned in my previous videos, we don't have access to all of them within the demo. Let's take a look at what is currently available. The first Silkbind maneuver, Hunting Edge, seems effectively useless to me. It launches the hunter into the air and similarly to the longsword gives them options on how to land either by performing a plunging attack or a generic slash. It's good for mounting damage, but with how easily the hunter can enter the air, I don't see it being used fairly often. Seriously, it may be my lack of experience as a greatsword user, but the move seemed positively lackluster and difficult to land. The next maneuver is Power Sheath, which launches the hunter forward slightly and sheaths their weapon. The move has iframes, making it good for advancing or retreating from a monster without getting hit. Performing this maneuver applied a damage buff to the hunter's weapon for a short period of time. It's similar to the Hunting Art Lion's Maw seen in Generation Ultimate, but instead of being applied to only the first attack, the Rise version could potentially get multiple buffed hits out of it. While Rise doesn't seem to have added too much to the Greatsword, it does seem to fine-tune the weapon slightly and make it more useful in the air, considering Monster Hunter Rise has a larger focus on verticality. The Greatsword started as a rather simplistic weapon from a first glance perspective, but it really did have a fair amount of depth to it. I think a lot of people early on wanted to get into the series after seeing a hunter carrying a giant sword and fighting dragons. I know as a child it reminded me of Final Fantasy VII, and needless to say I was a little disappointed at first with how slow and methodical the game was in comparison to my expectations. Despite that, the weapon was truly much more maneuverable and versatile than it seemed, and the charge mechanic ended up being an addition that completely defined it moving into later generations. I was honestly shocked at how much World managed to squeeze in for the Greatsword users in comparison to every other generation. It truly blew up in the amount of options and branches hunters had at their disposal. I often think of the Greatsword as the face of Monster Hunter, and I think it managed to hold that role by being an incredibly gratifying weapon to use with an absolutely iconic design. Anyway, that's all I have for you today in regards to the Greatsword. If you enjoyed this video, Video, consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. Let me know what your favorite weapon is and what you want me to cover next. Thanks so much for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.